Good. And before we get started, we put on the website on the consultation form where we start recording training sessions and sessions of consultation. Yeah. All right, so I'll just read you over the form here. Um, fear aggression? Yeah. Even towards family? Yes. And then um, the, uh, I think it was another residing dog? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and fill me in. So he's two and a half years old. Uh, he lives with my brother, he's the owner. And he's got two little ones. So he was, we've had him, I think, since he was three months old. And he's been, he was great. Um, he got into a couple fights with Rocco, that's the older dog, he's eight years old. And then he started, so he, he got punished for the fights because he ended up biting Rocco pretty badly. And since then, he kind of just lost trust in people, including family members. It's okay, buddy. Um, so if he is, if he comes to us to be petted, which he does, then he's totally okay. But if we approach him, um, then he's just, he's not sure. And uh, like that's when bites happen. So he bit me twice. Um, when his aggression started to be uh, pretty bad, I decided to take him to my house because we don't have kids. So that at least, you know, the other kids are safer. Um, and he's a really good dog. He's, but his, it's okay, it's okay. But his fear is just, uh, it's too much. So the, the first time I got bit was, he, he was really comfortable with me. He came up to me to be petted. I was petting him. Um, and then my, you know, I, I kind of moved toward his neck and made eye contact with him. <laughs> and that's when he lost us. He ended up biting me in the hand. Um, that was the first bite that happened. And the second time was just a little over a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. was when I was, um, I approached him to take off the collar when he wasn't really expecting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't read the signs carefully. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was, but he didn't growl. He didn't give me any you know, warning sign mm -hmm. and he went straight for the hand. And when he bites, it's not just one bite and pull off. Mm -hmm. he go, it's like four bites at least. So mm -hmm. he ends up doing pretty bad damage when that happens. Mm -hmm. So we're just hoping um, something we can do. Because um, as far as the stranger goes, you can you know keep them separated when people come over. But mm -hmm. like within the family, and ideally we would like him to stay with my brother. Um, but the other dog is afraid of him now so you know whenever he's around he'll leave and go elsewhere um the kids are separated obviously but it's just and he becomes territorial so i was just talking to my sister-in-law let's say he is so back of the house is pretty much where you know they have the freedom they roam around they don't come in the front of the house that's where the kids are um, so sometimes he'll claim a room, mm -hmm. and if my sister-in-law is just passing through, mm -hmm. then he'll growl, like he's not mm -hmm. okay with that either. Um, so that's really, the, the main concern is we want to be, like, we just don't want to be feared in the house. And, you know, kids, we can keep them separated for the most part, but there's, they're walking now, and, uh, you know, if we... Like if there is an instance which will happen at some point where you know we don't have the eyes on the kids and they're gonna be in that space and we just don't want him to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So. Um, aside from you, has he been anybody else? No. Just so it, I meaning um, no one outside of the family. So me, he did. My brother, who handles him mostly. Uh, my brother got bit a couple of times. My sister-in-law <laughs> bit one time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, pretty much anybody that kind of comes in his space, mm -hmm. um, as long as you kept distance, uh, he's okay. He doesn't do anything. So when people come in the house, he's okay with them as long as they're not in his personal space. How old is he? He's two and a half. How long has this been going on for? Um, it kind of started a year ago, and it's just progressively worse. Six mm -hmm. months. Or because if he's a year and a half, he's a year and six months. No, he's two and a half. Two and a half. Okay, yeah. so a year and a half. He's still yeah. Uh, how long have you had him for? Uh, I think they got him when he was probably three, four months old. Okay, so how was he then? He was great. He was super friendly with everybody. Everybody, like, you 
you know, there was no concern whatsoever. It was good with people, good with dogs, you know, we could touch him, pet him, that was not an issue. And he, he loves, um, like, he, he was a cuddler too, um, but my brother initially thought that it was, it kind of stemmed from jealousy of the other dog. I don't think that's what it was. Um, I think it's when he got into fight a couple times with Rocco. So he's okay with, you know, he'll go sniff Rocco and Rocco's fine with that. But when Rocco wants to sniff him, he's not okay with that. And that's when the fight breaks up. And then Rocco will try to, you know, get away from him, but then he'll, and he's like, no, we're not done, kind of thing. How old is Rocco? He is eight. What kind of dog is he? He is um, Shepherd and Lab Mix. Okay. Uh, so was the first altercation of dog fight that yeah. he had? And yeah. That was with Rocco? Yeah. Okay. And that happened in about a year and a half? Probably, um, if not sooner, because I couldn't give you an accurate timeline just because I don't live with him. I got involved when the issue started to get worse and I was able to put in the time to train him. Um, my brother, I mean, he, he has, he's not able, he's not going to be able to give as much time as this guy is right now. So the, the planning is, you know, I'm going to take the primary responsibility of training him and then my brother is also going to be involved. Where you know he learns the skills. Oh, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's all right. Um. And now he's also um. He, I would say aggression towards other dogs, like when I take him for a walk. But he's okay. scared. It's out of fear. Where he, you know, his tail is always gonna be like this when we're walking him. He's just nervous. Um, all the time, he's most comfortable when playing ball. Like that's his com That's his. Uh, that's what drives him. Mm -hmm. Is the ball. It's not even food. Uh, he could care less about that. Okay. So. Um. So for you, he got you when you were going to his collar and you caught him off guard. Yeah. And then the other uh, time, uh, you were petting him, and then you made eye contact, and then like. In that moment, he, he, yeah. he, he snapped. Yeah. Uh, what about with your brother? Um, one time that I was aware, the one time that he mentioned was, so they were in the basement, and uh, he uh, he kind of you know tapped Rocco like, come on Rocco, let's go upstairs. Oh sure. And Rocco's totally okay with that. Like you can you know he he doesn't show any aggression. But then as soon as he said Tyson, let's go. He assumed he was gonna be hit, and he went for his elbow. Okay. So that's what had happened. So it's it's been all the time that has happened is when he feels fear for his life, and I don't know why he's that scared. Um, but he doesn't really trust anyone fully. Like he'll when he is happy, you know, when we're playing ball. He, he approaches both me and my husband and he put, you know, he kind of wants us to pet him. So we're okay doing that, but whenever there is, you know, eye contact or he just doesn't pet him. It's alright, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. Um, what about your, was it your sister-in-law? Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what, what led up to it. If there was a minor one, he kind of just snicked her here. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what, what it was. It wasn't a bad fight when you her. Yeah. I, the worst has been with me. He, otherwise, uh, with my brother, it wasn't too bad. On the elbow? Yeah. Okay. And what about Rocco? Rocco is, uh, he's, I think, four times he's bit Rocco, and he's left puncture wounds each time. Okay. Like that visit, not? No, he healed fine without okay. it, so we didn't really take him. Okay. Uh, anything else? No, that's the main concern. I mean, he's not, he has the potential to learn because he does listen and he wants to please, but um, he's not that great with obedience either. It's like if there's a treat or ball, he'll do whatever you tell him, mm -hmm. but otherwise he won't really 
you know, you tell him to sit, he's not going to sit <laughs> unless there is something there for him. Okay. And who got the prom call from? Oh, um, we've had, my brother. He's okay. had it since he was little. Did you work with a trainer before or no? Not with this dog. We had tried brought one and they kind of um, implemented the same thing with him. But, I mean, Rocco also is kind of similar. He'll listen if there is a treat, you know, otherwise he's, like but he's not a troublemaker at all, so. And what makes you think it's fear? Because um, he just looks, he gives off that fearful, you know, um, expressions, and that's what it ends up so That's why I thought it was fear. When he becomes reactive towards dogs on the leash, Right? Like, let's say you walk on the leash, you'll bark a dog. Yes. What does that look like? Um, so one instance I can tell, the dog goes way far ahead and then he starts whining like this, and then, uh, you know, his tail is always tucked in like that. Um, like, we can control him, he won't really launch, he wants to go forward, but when we kind of stop him or let him, he'll, he'll stop. Like, he hasn't really attacked any other dog, or we haven't been in a situation where he's been able to hurt anybody else. It's just whoever's in the home and then being in his space, that's when this happens. If you have a guest come over, how is he? Um, he's fine. So they're always separated. There's always distance. So he doesn't really bark. He doesn't, yeah. Um, well, I shouldn't say he doesn't really bark. He'll he'll kind of throw a little puff there, but he doesn't keep going. Like when you tell him, you know, to stop, he'll stop, um, and then he just kind of goes to his room and hangs out there whenever he feels un uncomfortable. So it's manageable. Okay. Yes. So in one year, he's essentially had six instances. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Two with Rocco, two with you, one with your brother, one with your sister. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. Okay. So, how confident do you feel in handling him, like right now? So, after the bite, you know, while trying to take the collar off, I'm, I'm really fearful, but he listens. As long as I'm not going to be touching him, it's fine. Like, I can take him for a walk, I'm okay with that. Um, as long as I'm keeping distance. I, I don't know how he's going to react, really, with other people, but I just automatically keep my distance from him people and dogs okay. just to avoid. If I were to touch him right now, how confident would you be in keeping him contained? I feel like he's gonna bite. I, I can hold him down. Yeah, that's but, all I need. Mean. Okay. Because I have, so this here is my bite sleeve. Mm -hmm. This allows me to touch dogs. And he, can, he doesn't know that this is not a part of me. He thinks this is, this is an extension. Mm -hmm. it is It allows me to, to really get an idea of like, what is the dog about, okay? Because sometimes people can see this fear, but it's something different. Mm -hmm. So then, because what I'm hearing, I don't really pick up fear. Really? No. I pick up a bully. Hmm. Um, and I think what may have happened is, so typically behaviors change at six months and a year. Okay, that's why I asked how old was he, you know. Yeah, so he's two and a half months, a half a year and a half. So uh, in that time frame, he's coming into his own. The, the, a year, a one to two years is kind of teenager brain. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like kids, right? Growing up, when you're a teenager, you start to press things more and kind of test the boundaries a bit, whatever. And then you're an adult. Uh, same thing for dogs. So what may have happened is, you know, at that year and a half mark, when he had the fight with Rocco, either it created distrust, uh, which I can see it, you know, kind of mm -hmm. feeling what you're seeing, or two, uh, it's created a bully. Because people typically don't stop fights correctly. Okay, so if he feels like he won that fight, he's going to resort to aggression anytime he doesn't like something or if you catch him off guard, he's just mm -hmm. going to think it worked the first time. That's mm -hmm. why it won't work now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but I, will, I wouldn't know until I actually try to press him. Yeah. Because the way he goes at the fight and everything like that is going to tell me, yeah, he's scared, no, he's not scared. Okay. okay? So, are you comfortable with just holding him? Yeah. Okay, so just keep him there and he closes the door real quick just in case things go south, he doesn't run loose. <laughs> so all you do is stand still, and go ahead and get a second hand on there as well. Yeah. Okay, now if anything happens and you feel unsafe, mm -hmm. you want to pull straight up okay. and away from you. Okay, so go ahead and take a step back. Yep, and then short release a little bit more, about right there. 
It can just stand still, it can skip the grip. Uh, when we come to his other side, uh, so he's on your left. There we go. Uh, going back into this corner right here. And you're going to put him in the corner. There you go. Uh, which can be kind of a fear mm -hmm. issue. 
because um, like right now with me coming into a space, he's like, hey man, I don't know you, mm -hmm. right? Why, what are you trying to touch me? Mm -hmm. And I just keep coming in and eventually he started escalating. So typically I would put yeah, yeah. pressure on, but I don't want to put you at risk. So I just, that's why when he would get too intense, you saw me step away mm -hmm. and then he relaxed. Because yeah. when I step away, I take off discomfort, okay? So then he no longer perceives threat. Mm -hmm. So the issue with this here is when we deal with aggression and stuff, because you mentioned like the children and everything, mm -hmm. right? It is aggression is not something that a dog is born with or without. It's uh, it's uh, innate to everyone and everything. You know, every animal is capable of becoming aggressive. It's just are they put in a situation where they feel the need to be, right? Mm -hmm. So like for for this guy, once now that he's learned, oh, this is an option for me, he's just kind of using that whenever he feels uncomfortable. Um, and it's like it's like saying that. You, you go to like someone goes to a therapist and the therapist tells them like, I'm gonna help you so you never become angry again. Do you believe that? No. No, so it's, 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 it's uh, unrealistic, right? So think of aggression as an escalated form of anger, mm -hmm. if you will. So everybody's capable of it. It's just, are you put in a situation where you may need to be, right? Mm -hmm. So for this guy, um, can we, <laughs> how do you say, paper down it uh, or like, uh, yes, but it's not just like teaching them that it's not a healthy response, but it's also teaching you how to have a dog like this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like I can't make him something he's not. So if I have a dog that's an anxious dog, I cannot make them an anxious, mm -hmm. but I can help them handle anxiousness better, and I can help the owner learn how to handle an anxious dog better. Mm -hmm. And those two things are what makes life easier, mm -hmm. okay? The hardest, some of the hardest cases are always when there's aggression towards a family, mm -hmm. okay? Because typically it's aggression towards the outside, mm -hmm. right? So then the owner doesn't have to worry about their own dog, right. right? So when it comes to aggression towards the own family, um, I don't want you to be, I don't want you to live uncomfortably within your own home, mm -hmm. right? But to some degree, you have to be aware. So like we get dogs here that can only come here. We have one here right now for boarding, okay? And I and I tell all my handlers, all the dogs that you see here, treat them as if they're all aggressive towards you. Because mm -hmm. it automatically puts them in a, in a certain frame of motion and movement and a way of being that they don't get mixed up where one day they're like, oh, this dog's friendly. Mm -hmm. And then they forget that this dog isn't friendly and they behave that way, does mm -hmm. that make sense? It is we just we, we just permanently behave a certain way so we avoid any issues okay whereas humans want the dog to be fixed mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry but it's not so much about not worrying it's that it's you're aware mm -hmm. and you're proactive so that we're always a step ahead so that we don't see anything mm -hmm. okay because you as a human can do that him as a dog he cannot mm -hmm. okay so when we go about correcting these behaviors, the problem is, so I can correct the biting, mm -hmm. okay, towards me, mm -hmm. but how am I supposed to correct it towards you? Right. Right, because I have a sleeve here. Mm -hmm. I can put them under stress. I have a big old suit that's 60 pounds. I can come in and just give them a hug, mm -hmm. right? But then when you take them home, so when it comes to dog behavior, in order to stop something, the dog technically has to perform it and be corrected for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can't teach him like, hey buddy, it's bad when you bite your mom. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, I didn't know that, thanks, right? Mm -hmm. Like a kid, if a kid talks back, you say, hey, you don't talk back to your mom. Mm -hmm. And the kid goes, sorry, right? And they understand that. Mm -hmm. For him, he has to do it, have a consequence for doing it. And, or, and then he goes, man, every time I try to bite mom, this happens, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But if I don't bite mom, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so I'm not going to bite her anymore. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He has to bite you in order for us to correct mm -hmm. the behavior, right? And that's the problem, is that when we're dealing with aggression towards the family, it's a bit harder, right? Because you, you already know, like, walk around with a 60-pound suit or have to buy this thing just yeah. so you can put his collar on, yeah. right? So, and like, let's say with the kids. So somebody just emailed us. Um, I don't know who they are. They just randomly emailed us. And they have a Rottweiler, 
and the Rottweiler bit their four-year-old son in the face. Okay? And they're like, we need your help right now. And we're like, this should have been done mm -hmm. at two months, right? When your dog was a puppy. Mm -hmm. and now your dog's a year and a half, two years old, now we have a big problem, mm -hmm. right? Because um, it's not just towards the son, it's starting to get towards even the mom and dad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're they're not a client, they're just someone like asking for answers, you know, and it's like, well, should have been two months ago, that's the answer, right? But the, the, the biggest thing that I saw there was that like, why, are you, or why, why do you allow your child to hug your dog when you know your dog has problems? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when it comes to the kid thing, even if we work with them, I would tell you the same thing. I would say these kids don't touch this dog yeah. because kids won't read his behavior. Like you, right? And even you as an adult have made mistakes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you like a realistic breakdown because okay. my job is yes, to get your dog under control. Mm -hmm. um, but my job is also to keep you and your family as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the options that I give people don't like. I'm not saying you put your dog on. But I've had cases just like this where the dog bites the owner. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them like, you know, this puts you at too much risk. You know, your dog would have to be muzzled anytime they're out and about. You know, as a precaution sake. Because we don't know when that dog's gonna have a moment. And I can educate the owner as much as possible, but if one day they slip up or they forget, you know, they make a mistake because we're humans. Because we're humans, um, that's going to put them in danger. Right? So, like, I had a case, try to pull straight up on your palm. Just pull up, 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 up. So you're going to keep pulling up. More up. Yeah, so he needs a better prop collar. That one's not that good. It's too loose. Not that it's too loose. It's just the snap, the, the fabric buckle mm -hmm. doesn't allow the prong collar to constrict to help us relax him. Okay. okay. So you can have a seat again. Um, anytime he tries to cry and stuff, I'm going to have you just try pulling straight up and we're going to see what that's okay? okay. And you can keep your seat. You'll just end up doing this. Um, so to give you an example, I had a family. They had uh, like five pit bulls. Okay. And they all were fine until we got the fifth one. And the fifth one was becoming problematic for everybody. There you go. Good boy. Um, and was attacking the other dogs and everything. And I kept telling the gentleman to like muzzle this dog, muzzle this dog, muzzle this dog, right? All the time he's out, muzzle this dog. And he was like, but we never had any problems. I'm like, I don't care, I'm gonna muzzle the dog. And it took me a long time, but I kept pushing it. He finally started muzzling the dog. About a week or so later, two weeks later, um, I didn't, I didn't see him for a while because his wife had birth, gave birth mm -hmm. um, and they had their baby, so they, you know, stopped training for a bit. But then I got a text saying, like, hey, Jesse, you know, we have to put Leo down. So I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm thinking no news is good news. Mm -hmm. uh, but they just had the baby and stuff. And he's like, sorry about the MIA. But, you know, so I talked to him on the phone and he, he was like, I'm grateful that you told me to muscle my dog. And I said, what happened? And he's like, well, my wife was um, on the bed with the baby. We are watching TV, Leo was muzzled on the bed as well, and she reached for the remote for the TV to change the channel, and he just attacked her hand, okay? And he got her a couple of times, even with the muzzle on. And he goes, it was intense. He's like, I, he's like, well, thankfully I had just walked into the room because I could immediately pull him off. He's like, but if that muzzle wasn't there, he's like, my baby was right there, uh, my wife's hand did, did fit, but now not, not, he's, like, he's like, the intensity, you know, he's like, if that muzzle wasn't on, he's like, I don't know if she would have a hand left, you know? And he was like, and I was able to, you know, remove him without concern of like, oh, what about me, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, and he's like, and unfortunately we made the decision. And I was like, I understand. I'm like, I don't judge. Um, but I was like, now you understand why I kept telling you most of your dog, right? So, um, but it was something that he didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I had, to. my job is to keep everybody safe. So I was seeing something that he wasn't. Okay. And then finally it happened and then, but we alleviated a lot of that. Okay. So here with a guy like this, there's already ways we can work around things. Okay. One of them is I just don't touch the dog. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's primarily where the issue is. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is trying to figure out, uh, if you're gonna walk with stuff, calling up, all that stuff. Um, how we do so safely, everything like that. Um, 
if you don't want to keep him separated, which I understand, we also have control in the sense if I tell him not to move for a period of time, he's not going to move, and it allows him to be in the space of the family. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then the family has to respect that he's there, we just don't do anything with them, mm -hmm. right? So, so the issue for people is like, well, Jess, what kind of life is that? Is that for the dog? And I go, the dog doesn't care. The dog doesn't even like being touched in the first place unless it's on his terms, mm -hmm. right? And that's the bully part. Is you're like, he's fine if he comes to you, mm -hmm. right? But then if you come to him, it's different, yeah. right? That's a bully type of behavior, okay? So here, because it's towards the, the people within the home is what makes it trickier. I have a case right now who's fear aggressive for sure. And her thing is anybody outside of the mom dad, mm -hmm. right? And she's made tons of progress. But I couldn't even do this with them. Mm -hmm. With him, like he's fine. Mm -hmm. Not until they go into the space, like you said, mm -hmm. does he have a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, we would address that behavior. Like I can correct it and press the boundaries and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, the issue is getting it to transfer to you, mm -hmm. okay? Questions so far? No. Um, do you know how we train? Did you do research on this? Yeah. The methods that we yeah. use? Yeah. yeah, okay. So we use prong collar and we also use e collar, mm -hmm. okay? Now, e collar is a very effective tool. Mm -hmm. um, it allows us to correct fear based behaviors without um, creating more fear, mm -hmm. essentially, of the, of the threat. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to get an idea of what this looks like, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, the dog's name is Lucy, okay. L U C Y. Okay. Yeah, I've seen. The pit bull, that's fear aggression. Okay, so we are in class, and she's more extreme. So we're making good progress, but much different than him, right? Because she was much louder. She was pooping mm -hmm. all over the place, right? So here, a similar type of approach. I have to touch him. I have to do what he doesn't want, and I have to correct him. The problem that this might create in your case is one, when you try to put the collar on, mm -hmm. he might become sad into it, right? And the only reason, like, so for Lucy's case, the reason why that's not a problem is because there's no aggression towards the owners. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. towards outside people. Yeah. So I didn't have to worry about that. In your case, because there's already aggression towards people within the home, he may use that as, a, um, as an opportunity to become defensive. Yeah. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind. Yeah. Um, the only time I've ever seen that happen, where dogs become aggressive towards the owner with the e-collar, is because there was already aggression towards the owner. Okay, so that's why I bring that up here. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that uh, it's hard to get that to transfer to you because you're not going to be walking around with protection and stuff, mm -hmm. right? So there are exercises that we can do uh, they're called counter conditioning, um, which is where we pair e collar and food. Mm -hmm. So, like, if he if he like tries to bite, we correct him. Mm -hmm. But then, if he doesn't do anything, we give him a reward mm -hmm. to teach him like, hey, if you don't do anything, nothing's gonna happen. Plus, you get to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. The issue with that stuff is that it's a very controlled context, uh, and dogs learn the difference between life and like exercises, control exercises, training sessions. So the hard part is getting it to transfer over to an organic setting, mm -hmm. okay? Because like you said, if like you just like, let's say you're doing something and you just forget and you just go for his collar, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna have a moment there. Because yeah. it's so abrupt, it's so organic and it catches them off guard, okay? So that's where things get tricky. Mm -hmm. So what I would do in this case, is um, we have to get discipline in for sure. Mm -hmm. I would expect an increase in defensiveness in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So then I have to educate you and be like, this may happen, you know, you, you can avoid it like this. If you find yourself in a situation, this is what you're gonna do. Because unfortunately, in order, in order to get over the stuff, you have to confront it, okay? So his problem is no one has bitten him yet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, no one has. Like no one's corrected him for that behavior. Mm -hmm. So I can do that. My only concern again is just how is he gonna turn around and then behave with you? Yeah. Right? 
So then people think like if they see that, they're like, oh, we're making the dog worse. Like, well, no, because now you're challenging the dog. Mm -hmm. Now you're confronting him. So if you go to a store and you see someone stealing, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, this guy is stealing, that person might pull out a knife, they might pull out a gun, right? And you seemingly made the situation worse, but it was already there. But as soon as you confronted it, now we see more. Does that make sense? So it's the same thing for dogs. Sorry, when you start confronting the behavior, in the beginning, you might see an increase. And you have to keep working through it, and then he goes, okay, like I gave him my best shot, but mom's not taking my crap anymore, mm -hmm. okay? And then I, would, I wouldn't I would worry about the physical contact stuff. He would just be a dog that you just have. You know, like I was talking about this with my girlfriend the other day, and it was like a, some dog's rescue profile, and it said, you know, we'll do great at home, needs to be ignored, just the dog that exists with you, you feed the dog, you walk the dog, that's it, that's your life. You know, and she was like, what kind of life is that? I'm like, the dog don't care, <laughs> right? But, they're, but the rescue's being straightforward. They're saying, like, look, if you can't, which most people can't, yeah. if you can't do this, this is not your dog, yeah. right? So same thing here, I'm going, okay, like, there's issues. The reason why we do the training is because we want the ability to stop it mm -hmm. and, and prevent it and deter it from happening again. But this is a lifestyle. This isn't like a car where you take it in and you get like, the engine changed and get a new car that you can do, you can drive again or whatever. This is a dog that's a living, breathing creature who's going to continue to make decisions based upon his environment. Okay? Question so far. Um, what are you hoping to achieve? Like, what are your goals? <laughs> Ideally, a perfect dog, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, just aggression towards us. That's the biggest thing we want to tame it down. Um, everything else, you know, I feel like we can work and we can figure out a solution. But the main thing is like we need to be able to feel safe around him. Mm -hmm. We can definitely, you know, ignore him, which is what we've been doing. But the instances where, where the bites happen, you know, like I do want to give him affection, especially when he comes for affection, because he, he's he's such a jolly good type of dog. Except you know when this kind of stuff happens and when he is acting really fearful, like he he's afraid of random things. When he comes to my house, there is one room that he's just afraid of, um, mainly because I, I think the heater is there, the mm -hmm. just loud noises are there. Um, like random things, if there's a box in the room, then he's afraid. Um, <laughs> like everything else, we can. If, if it didn't, I, I, I would like him to improve, but if it didn't improve, fine, but as long as we can somehow control the aggression towards the family. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the biggest thing we want to work on. So, what I would expect is that anytime he's going to be around the family, is he's got his collar on. Okay. Oh. And, and of course, like e you would have, you yeah, e collar. Because that allows you to stop things at the press of a button. Right. The problem is you don't have a means of stopping it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you technically do, but it's more complicated. Um, is <laughs> the e collar allows you to correct them and or prevent something mm -hmm. uh, in the act uh, without harm to yourself because mm -hmm. you don't need to be attached to him. Right. You just press the button. Okay, so I would have to mold this over. This is definitely uh, an interesting case, mm -hmm. just because it's he's a, he's a sizable dog and it's obviously towards the family. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing would be uh, when it comes to the kids and stuff, just like telling the kids like you don't touch yeah. them. Like yeah. you give them a six to eight foot buffer, like to yeah. leave this dog alone. If he approaches you, you just ignore him. Don't like if he looks in the face, you ignore him. Don't hug him. Right, no matter how much you want, you don't do it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because unfortunately, and even humans, like adult humans, do this. Yeah, is when they feel a dog coming to sniff, they're like, hey, yeah, that's the dog it's, out. yeah, it's more of an issue with adults than it is with kids because the kids are one of them is two, and she kind of knows that he growls and he bites, and you just keep your distance. The other one is eight months, so you know, they're just so small that. The risk is there. Um, 
we have to be constantly vigilant. And they're good about um, just keeping us up for the most part. But they share a room, so most dogs, the whole family is in one room when they um, when they sleep. And that is kind of like a family room where everybody kind of um, everybody's together, um, but everybody just kind of avoids, you know, the other dogs with him, the kids are away from him, but they can coexist in a so when you pull up, you're gonna yeah. pull up and continue to pull up. So, oh. so just yeah, just pull up, up, up. Oh, until he sits. Up, up. yeah, just up. And then pull up, like that. And don't worry about the good point. Oh. Up, 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 up. Yep, you just have to have any, keep going up. Up, up, up. Are you, are you yeah, relaxed a little bit? You look nervous. Yeah, because I don't want to look at him. So, so if you need two hands, because you got to keep upwards tension uh -huh. until he finally relaxes, and then you relax. Okay. Okay. So yeah, and, and the, the issue is, is your is your prong collar is that it, it doesn't yeah. give constricting pressure. Mm -hmm. So it's really just this as yeah. opposed to like the squeeze. Yeah. You know, um, where are you located? Um, so he lives in Mount Prospect. I'm in Bolingbrook. So you're from the suburbs too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I approach this. Because this is, some of the stuff we can do here. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff has to be done in the home, um, which is more expensive. Plus there's a travel fee, which makes it even more expensive. So, um, anything else that, you, that I should know? Nothing that I can think of. Okay, so the first thing that has to happen is we have to teach him how to walk correctly. That will help with the reactivity stuff on the leash towards other dogs. But it's essential to teach them how the e collar works. Okay. Now the there you go. Now the, the, the healing exercise is non-confrontational, mm -hmm. so allows you to uh, correct them for his behavior mm -hmm. and ideally not spark defensiveness. Okay. okay? Um, it helps them learn how the e-collar turns on, how it turns off. It helps you learn how the e-collar turns on, turns off, yeah, exactly what you're doing. So every time he gets up, there's something pull up like that, okay? Um, and we see what does that fix? Does it change anything with him, okay? But also, if we're gonna see an issue with him having touch sensitivity towards the collar, we're gonna see that that first week, okay? If that becomes a problem, then we have to work on that problem. Okay, so this is not going to be, this may not be a very straightforward class by class case. I have to play according to how does he respond for the week. Okay, so if we start doing the e collar training, good job, and he, um, he's becoming defensive when you put the collar on, now you have to take time to fix that problem. Right? That could take a week, that could take a few weeks. So maybe I don't see you for your second class until like five weeks later. You know, like I had another case. Not like this one, but like similar in the sense that she has a lot of issues to work through. And, we, and even when he does his crying, he's a lot. And it'll last. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a time frame for you. like him to you know sit stay heal uh, place be good about that but really for us the biggest concern is the behavioral yeah. so the reason why I asked about the control is the obedience stuff should be the easiest part okay what would make the obedience hard is if he does become defensive over Nine to twelve class program. 
Um, next six classes, you would cover the essentials. That's going to be the leash walking. That's typically two classes. The stationary work, which is go here, don't move, so we don't have to worry about him with the kids and stuff. If if I'm sitting here and he's in the corner and the kid's over here, I don't have to worry about anything. He's not going to go anywhere. Okay? Uh, the remaining three classes of that six-class program, we would uh, work on the behavioral stuff. Trying to figure out, like, um, uh, coexisting with him. Keeping things safe, right? Um, handling issues that might pop up. For instance, like if he does, he does the potential towards the collar. Uh, if you did nine to 12 classes, it just gives us more time to, um, to teach more things, more control, work on more behaviors if they come up. Because I'm not worried about the control aspect. Sit, stay down, complete seal, that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. The hard part is just like avoiding things, working around things, you know, keeping the kids safe, um, all that stuff, okay? And like stopping like all this nonsense here mm -hmm. is way easier, okay? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a ton easier, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's just press a button. It's just a matter of like how he can respond mm -hmm. to that, okay? Uh, questions so far about any of that? No. What I would do in the beginning is for the obedient stuff, is we would just meet here. Mm -hmm. Anything that we can get done here, we'll get done here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let's say we need to have a class or two mm -hmm. coming to the home, then then we would figure out some kind of you know fee or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I'd go out to work with you guys in the home. But this way you don't have to pay a ton of extra money mm -hmm. for stuff that can be done here in the city, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, other questions? No. So you said nine? Twelve? Six, nine, or twelve. Okay. Six is the minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, three, two classes on heel, one class on stationary control, three classes for the behavioral stuff. Okay, and we can spread those out if needed. So if we do the first class and you're like, hey Jesse, like you got that new to call on him, I send you an email, I send you some videos. I will say you're gonna work on it this way. Unless you want to schedule a class on it, then you can come and I can show you how to do so. But then we have to fix that problem. Right, so then you gotta take your time to fix that problem, but there's no point in having class two if you can't put the collar on your dog. Right. right? So then we have to kind of play it by ear. If it's moving straight forward, like I hope it will, then we're good. We can just one, two, three every week. We and then mm -hmm. build on things. Uh, if you did nine to twelve classes, we can teach more obedience, like you said, the sit the stay stuff or whatever. Um, but really what he's lacking is discipline. Mm -hmm. That's what he's needing, right? Yeah. Um, he most likely to wear the, the collar more extensively, yeah. um, just because it's issues within the home. Mm -hmm. So like if he's in, this, in the kennel sleeping and he's fine in the kennel, we don't need it then. But anytime he's gonna be outside of that kennel and around the kids and stuff, around you and family, he's got the collar on. Okay, so he doesn't have a kennel. He just has dog bed. Okay, we we'll so want to get a kennel. Just... Okay, because it's gonna, it's gonna, because he's gonna need a break from the collar at some point, right? And the last thing you want is a dog that you have problems with. Having free reign, but no means to stop him should things go south. Okay, so he's, he's not going to have the same, he can't have the freedom that he had before. And he doesn't care. Okay, but like he's not sitting there going, oh man, you guys are mean to me in this cage. It's just, it is what it is so that we can keep him in the home. Because I'm trying to mitigate any more instances of aggression towards you, your family, and Rocco. Okay, so the kennel just kind of helps remove a worry mm -hmm. when he's not equipped, mm -hmm. okay? And I would, I would expect any times he's out that kennel, he's got the collar on, okay. okay? Because for another dog, like for Rocco, mm -hmm. if he goes after him, Rocco has a means to defend himself because he can bite him right back. Mm -hmm. And Rocco never bites him. He doesn't fight back? He, no. he tries to avoid as much as he can, mm -hmm. but he won't, he has not put his teeth into it. Yeah, and that's why he's got such a big ego. Remember, I said the first one who probably won that fight, he definitely won the fight if Rocco didn't fight him back. Yeah. Okay. So that, that that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless if it's fear or not, he's just become a bully and no one's fitting him back. So now he's just a jerk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're not being mean. Mm -hmm. It's just, it is what it is. If he wasn't this way, like he wouldn't be here. You know, it would just be obedient to whatever. Mm -hmm. 
What's, um, what's the downside of just keeping the e collar on him at all times? But we're not using it, only using it when we need it. I mean, it's just like, like you also wear out the collar faster, so you'll, you know, oh. they last for years. Like, I've had mine for like eight years and stuff, but the battery, it's a rechargeable battery. Oh, I so see. it's in the cell phone. So it has to be taken off and recharged. At some point, it's going to be charged, correct, yeah. I mean, it'll still last you days, even if you let it on all the time. But the other issue is um, pressure sores. If you leave the same spot for too long, uh, so, it's all so there's a special adapter we carry up here, so you can wear it for an extended period of time. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but, um, But a guy like him like needs some more structure. Yeah. Too much freedom can be a bad thing. Just like kids. Give them too much freedom and bad things can happen. Yeah. Okay. It's like if 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 he didn't have this aggression issue, like I wouldn't care. Yeah. It would just be obedience. Yeah. But you know, it, you're not being mean, you're just being black and white, and you're saying life is not gonna be the way it was before. Because mm -hmm. it's 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 technically not. Mm -hmm. You know? I get a lot of people who are like, Jesse, I just want to go back to how the dog was before this happened. I go, yeah. it's not going to happen. We're not there anymore. This is where we're at. And these are the answers I can give you for where we're at now. You know, uh, when I get dogs that fight within the home, it happens all the time. Jesse, I want my dogs just back to being friends again. I'm like, <laughs> probably not going to happen. Once that first fight happens, it's, it's, it's usually a problem. Because uh, dogs will fight until somebody's dead. I walk in the home with that dog. You know? So, Okay. Other mm -hmm. questions? Okay, so we can kind of, so realistically, just somewhat mitigate the aggression and just how we handle him. That's essentially what's the main part of aside from the obedience yeah. part of that. I mean, because in order for me to fix the aggression towards you, we would technically have to force aggression towards you and correct it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did right now. Mm -hmm. I technically forced the aggression yeah. by doing something I knew he doesn't like, right? But we can correct that because it's me. I'm a trainer and everything. Mm -hmm. But you're not gonna always be, right. you know? And then if you're pressing boundaries with him, that also starts to like, potentially bring up stuff. Yeah. So I'm trying to work in a manner that allows me to mitigate issues, but at the same time, like keep everybody as safe as possible. Yeah. If it was aggression towards your neighbors or your guests, yeah, it's so much easier. It is, it is. <laughs> um, okay. And I think I read something about you're afraid of Muslim or something, is that uh, correct? Yes, just because we, we never did. Now he had to go to the vet to get his uh, rabies shot. And my brother was able to because he was distracted. So it kind of went much smoother than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. So that was good. but. I'm definitely afraid to be in his area if he doesn't, if, he's, yeah. if he has not approached me. Um, I would recommend, highly, highly recommend muscle conditioning as well. Yeah. I would give you a means to do that. Okay. Um, and it doesn't require you having to go to his space. He's going to want to put his space in the muscle. Okay. But it's very strict. Uh, people have a hard time with it because they feel bad, but you can't feel bad here. You know, again, he doesn't care. If he cared, like, why would he bite you? Mm -hmm. Right? Regardless of his fear or bully behavior or whatever, if he actually, so people always, always talk about that. Like, oh, like, you know, I give my dog so much love and affection, I'm the best things, and this and that. My dog still bites me. I'm like, yeah, because the dog don't care. Mm -hmm. You know? So, muzzle conditioning, uh, we would send you information on that. I would start the process as soon as possible. Um, it's uh, in terms of control, it's just how much control you want. Six is the minimum, then there's nine and 12. Uh, the other option you have is the behavior program. The behavior program is much more expensive, but you're paying for, uh, it's like a, a lifetime guarantee, if you will. Mm -hmm. So like Lucy, mm -hmm. uh, the Pitbull, or Doug, I don't know if you saw the Doug, the Pitbull. Yeah, Those two dogs are on a behavior program, mm -hmm. okay? So that behavior program is, I keep working until I get them to a point where like, we're good. It might be 16 classes or so, and then they just go off, right? But let's say in a couple of years something happens, mm -hmm. they need my help. They don't pay for more. They don't pay more money. They pay. It's, it's kind of like a lifetime mm -hmm. guarantee or warranty. Is I come in, 
We do full control for sure in terms of obedience, and we press the behavior as much as possible. I get it to the best point that I think that we can. And uh, let's say we do 12 classes, and you need more, like five more. I'd say we need about five more classes. You don't pay more money. You've paid an upfront fee, okay? And then- And that's for the behavioral. That's for the behavior. The six, nine, or 12 week program is a fixed time frame, right? Six, nine, or 12 classes. It's cheaper, but you're paying for a, six, a, fit, a fixed time frame. Mm -hmm. The behavioral program, and obviously with Lucy and Doug, you can see the difference between them and like other dogs, yeah. is they are on behavior programs. Because their owners want, if something happens in the future, Jesse's gonna come back, and we don't have to worry about paying more money. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's how that works, okay? So if you if you like the idea of like having just this kind of like guarantee and or warranty, a year from now, 10 years from now, I come in, address the issue, no problem. Uh, you have the behavior pro programs as an option. Otherwise, if you did like a 12 class program, uh, I would cover as much as possible. I do prioritize behavior mm -hmm. a lot because that's obviously why we're here. Mm -hmm. If you needed to add two or three more classes, we would just pro you know, send you a, an invoice for two mm -hmm. more classes. Uh, if in two years from now you need a class, you just pay for a class, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it's really just up to you if you'd rather like have that security of the, the behavior program or um, if it's, you know, I just want a lot of control as best as we can, even if we need a class in the future, we'll pay for it separately, mm -hmm. okay? Um, in terms of the collar, he's definitely gonna be on the big boy collar. Okay. Uh, same call that Lucy and Doug are on. Uh, because if he flips out and he has a moment, the last thing you want to worry about is are we have enough power to turn this dog to shut down the aggression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, questions? No. Oh, for behavioral um, training, is mm -hmm. that also once a week type of thing? No. Or? Okay. So if you did the behavior program, you're looking at 12 to 16 classes. That's usually the, the estimate to start. Um, I, I, I'm usually, except for Doug and Lucy, coincidentally, by the 12th class, it's like we're close to done. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy and Doug are very extreme cases, Doug more so, yeah. that I've had to really push things um, and it's taken longer. Like So with Doug, we've maxed out the power mm -hmm. and I'm there for five minutes trying to stop him. And then he finally, like that. that is super, super rare. The dogs I've had like that before were 150 pound dogs. Doug is only 78 pounds. Mm -hmm. But his intensity, his, his anxiety, that, that aggression is just so far gone. He needs, he, he needs some out there methodology. Mm -hmm. This one I would anticipate would be more straightforward because mm -hmm. he's not to their level. Yeah. Uh, however, the hard part is just the aggression towards yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions? No. Um, do you sorry? Do you anticipate that you know anywhere from nine to twelve, to, let's say twelve, would be sufficient for him? I know you said you don't really know how he's going to respond to the collar, so I guess it depends on that. Okay. Yeah, but what would happen is everything is contingent on him. So I wouldn't have you continue coming back if you can't even collar your dog. I would give you the answers mm -hmm. and you would do it, you know, um, and if you're, if, as long as you're doing what I say, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm like, don't feed that dog if he doesn't put that collar on, then he's not eating for five days, you know, but that's where people have a problem. Yeah. Because they're like, well, I feel bad. And like, but the dog's trying to bite you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have to override one thing with another thing. So we would use food there. But I wouldn't have to continue coming back. That's all stuff that I can send you videos on, I can send you emails on. So we use the classes for the stuff that's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you need to come by so I can show you how to do the muzzling and all that stuff, that's perfectly fine as well. Mm -hmm. But then I wouldn't have you return until you were able to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I said like right now, I would start the muzzle conditioning. Mm -hmm. Do that now, okay? Uh, it's super, super simple. It just takes time. So if you can't, the my unbooked till July, August, I believe right now, is you have a month to possibly two months to start doing this. So by the time you start the training, if it is a problem, you've already got two months of working. You're in, you're much farther along yeah. than because I get clients while I tell them mobile condition your dog, mm -hmm. and then they come to the class. 
when we need the muzzle, or we need to condition the dog. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. Now, is there, the current model that we have is the, I think, plastic cloth type of thing. Is that, is that fine? Or you want a, you want a, a mesh model. You want the basket. Okay. Did you say like basket cloth? No, it's, it's just uh, kind of around his mouth. Yeah, that's like a mesh model. Okay. You want a basket style, and we'll send you the information. Okay, you can get them on Amazon for like 15, 25 bucks. Yeah. Uh, and we'll send you videos to start conditioning the muzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can start that process, and then if, if things get start to go south, you would just you know send an email, and we send you more information so you can you can keep making progress. Um, other questions? Um, well, book till August. Uh, July. So last I heard, we're booking in July. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just letting people like potentially into August. Okay. And it really depends on your availability. Like if you have daytime availability like this, this is easier. Yeah. Because most people don't book these times. Yeah. My evenings and weekends, however, are very busy because that's where most people are off. You know, they work yeah. nine to five. Yeah. So I can definitely do weekdays, daytime. Okay. Yeah. So then you just let Maria know. That's easier. Okay. Okay. Um, other questions. Um. So my plan is to just keep them at my house and slowly reintroduce to. Um, Rocco, do you recommend anything else, or do you? Would it be a, What would be best for the outcome that you're looking for? As far as you know, him staying with my brother, where um, it does get a bit chaotic and they're very social. There's a lot of people come and go. That's not the case in my house. It's on the quieter side, and we have very you know routine. He he gets better structure. Um, and he needs a lot of, you know, physical activity. That's something we are able to provide. Mm -hmm. So, do you recommend that you know he stays with me, and then we slowly reintroduce when he's doing better um, to Rocco, or it would be okay for him to just be with my brother and try? Depends on consistency. Okay. Um, a dog like this doesn't do well, or wouldn't do well in a more chaotic environment. Yeah. Unless there was a very consistent handler. Yeah. So if your brother's like, hey, like he's making good progress, like I want to be a part of this, and like we teach him, mm -hmm. and he's responding well, mm -hmm. and your brother's like, yeah, like I'll keep Rocco like here, and he won't move, and I'll yeah. have a muzzle, and I'll have him with a collar. Because mm -hmm. that's where things get tricky. It's people are like, well, I don't have the collar on the dog. Yeah. I'm like, well, then you can't have the dog, yeah. because it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, yeah. it just comes down to consistency. But a guy that already has issues like this, mm -hmm. you know, like doesn't do well mm -hmm. in chaotic, chaotic environments unless yeah. there's someone there to guide them. Yeah. And that's why I was like, the kennel comes into play. Because I just pop in the kennel and I have to worry about like things happening or somebody making a mistake, you know, unless it's like blatantly stupid and they put their hand in the kennel. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. But definitely in the beginning, I would say start with two. You know, your brother wants them to join as well. Yeah, and he will. Um, he just, his. Our, his work hours and with kids, he's not as flexible as I am. Correct. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, your case is a little bit more tricky. Yeah. Uh, other questions? No. So Maria would send you the information, mm -hmm. the caller that you'll need, um, and then she'll just go over your schedule and stuff to figure out what. Um, and then you better give her your calendar so she knows uh, she can cross reference it and get a feel for like when she can schedule you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she can give her a better idea of like start date on that stuff. Um, but typically during the day like this is, is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, then she comes down to like what program you want to do. Uh, whether you want to do 6, 9, or 12 with behavioral, uh, it's completely up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, if you want more kind of security, so to speak, mm -hmm. a longer program, like yeah. a 9 to 12. Yeah. 6 is like just an option for you, it's like, hey, we have yeah. a budget and I'm trying to get this done, and I'm like, okay, like, I, have, I do like bare bones yeah. minimum, but I focus on the stuff that's going to be really important. Yeah, no, I, I'm thinking about 12, just just to make sure um, that we cover everything that we need with him. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? No. Yeah. All right. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, Maria will get in contact with you.